Renovator is a spectral denoising tool, I think is the best way to describe it. Whereas a, a broadband denoise tool will kind of take a sample of a piece of noise and then apply that sample to remove your target noise, the Renovator works on more uh, sort of specific one-off sounds. So if somebody's coughing or turning a page, you can open up the sound file with Renovator and it has a very visual display where it shows you time and frequency, uh, intensity of color represents how loud something is. It's an interesting skill to bring to the table, I think, being able to do this noise removal. Not many people do it. Uh, those who do it often don't do it well. Sometimes it, it, it can vary when dialogue editors will uh, will approach us with something like Tron that was uh, more more or less like you know we need to do a test but just knowing the nature of the noise that they were dealing with and its problems broadband denoisers and other plugins where you have just a dialed in setting wasn't really quite the right fit for for the problem at hand and it was through that that they they thought you know can you help us? And uh, we were able to help recover a bit of dialogue for them. How can he be so afraid of his own creation? I mean, he built Clue. Why doesn't he just end him? He could, but it would require reintegration. Yeah, all right. Flynn would never survive the event. It would mean the end of them both. How can he be so afraid of his own creation? I mean, he built Clue. Why doesn't he just end him? He could, but it would require reintegration. Yeah, all right. Flynn would never survive the event. It would mean the end of them both. On Tron Legacy, the light suits that the actors had, they all had their own different frequency. And as they would move, you get some very subtle Doppler effect too. So you couldn't use a broadband or a plug-in. So we had to be able to track the noises. And so that's where our program kind of lended itself to the problem really well, is that we were able to, if we heard something we didn't, we knew we could get rid of, we'd go and look for that, or we could follow, we could follow the noises as they came along. I think the biggest misconception with something, a tool like Renovator, is that it's, um, it's a process that you can just slap on something and instantly, instantaneously have your, your problem fixed. And it's, unfortunately uh, for people, it's a lot more time consuming than that. I mean, every, every noise and every, every sound that you're trying to deal with is its own unique problem. Using Renovator, you very much use your eyes as well as your ears. It's hard to say which one you rely on more. It's handy to have the visual reference because in the case of the wine that we would get with the Suits on Tron Legacy is that it's not actually just 16K. There's all sorts of little harmonics and stuff that add up to that. Or there might be lower, uh, lower frequencies that you don't see. So you remove something and, you, and you're constantly listening. You're reviewing it over and over and again. So over time, you do rely on your ears that I hear something, I need to keep zooming in more and more to this lower frequency band or get a bigger picture of the clip and see where the problem might be. So it's very complimentary to use the ears and the eyes for what we do. Big Butter and Eggman was a source clip in Benjamin Button, and quite a few of the source cues that were used in that film were very hard to find um, as restored masters on CD, so most of them came from our personal record collection. And so Jonathan actually did the broadband noise removal on uh, Big Butter and Eggman was just one example of that. And after that, then we used Renovator to take out uh, more specific um, noises such as plops and, and lar larger, uh, larger thumps. All I want a big butter and egg man from the way out in the west. I get so tired from working hard all day. I want somebody who wants me to play. If somebody was looking to gain more experience with it, is you just gotta use it. You know, you just have to practice with it. Um, for some people, it'll drive them nuts to practice with it. So they they just think, you know, we'll just we'll just you know leave it to somebody else, or they'll 
they're fine with just getting the quick and dirty. We aren't satisfied with that. We like to, uh, we like the challenges and we like to get it as clean as we can. And then I guess that's kind of what makes it sort of neurotic process um, when you, you know, at the end of the day, you've been sitting there wearing headphones, listening to tiny bits over and over and over again, not unlike any other editor. But then when you go outside and you hear the trees, the leaves rustling in the trees, you think, oh my gosh, all this noise, I gotta get rid of it all. <laughs> <laughs>